Well, first I'd like to say thank you. Those are some pretty nice things to say. I appreciate that. Um, uh, like she said, I am transplanted from, transplanted from the Air Force. And I hope nobody hold that against me. Um, I've actually enjoyed my time here, and I've learned quite a bit uh, in, in that brief period of time, about three years now. Um, as I look across the room, one of the things that really jumps out at me is um, all of the people that are in positions such as management, such as leaders, and you know the kind of responsibility each of those carry with them. Um, it's a pretty distinct uh, difference between the two. Uh, in my opinion, you need both of those, but um, it's a pretty big difference. A lot of people think, you know, I can be a manager, no big deal, you know, they get promoted in these supervisory positions, and then they discover it's actually a pretty big deal. Um, what I see on a pretty regular basis is um, employees who have worked their way up you know they were good managers they um, they were good at their job and over time that was rewarded they were promoted into a position and as you move up the ladder what you what goes with that is uh, the responsibility next thing you know you look back and oh I'm a leader um, I have people looking up to me I have people that rely on me to make decisions that have a pretty big impact on them. I think as leaders, we, we need to be careful that we don't lose sight of that. Um, these decisions that we make affect people, you know? And you can be a good manager and manage a process, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be able to move into a position and be a good leader. So that's something to think about when we're looking at these career choices that we make. Um, I did write a couple of things down uh, that I wanted to make sure I said uh, that I wanted people to think about as, as uh, you think about being a leader, as you think about being a manager. Um, when I retired from the Air Force, you know, typical retirement ceremony, everybody's got the awards and all the things they want to hand you, and you wind up with all this stuff you carry out through the car, the whole thing. Um, it was interesting to me, the thing that stood out to me the most, though, was a little plaque, really pretty small little plaque. But what it talked about was leadership. Um, it had a few things on there, but it eventually got to the point where it said, the real leader inspires. Um, I think that's really, really a focal point. Real leaders inspire. They inspire others to follow them. They inspire others by communicating their vision to them and by establishing a rapport with their employees. They focus on their employees. They may have managers working for them that manage these processes and that in, they ensure that the job gets done. But the leaders are the one they're the ones who communicate the vision. They're the ones who say, hey, here's the way we're going to go. And everybody, if they're good leaders, they'll follow them. When you look across this room, you see so many leaders um, all the way across. Um, I would venture to say every one of those went through a time where they questioned, am I cut out for this? Um, this is really a lot of responsibility. Will I be able to do this? But there they are now. So I guess the answer to that question, they found. Now, the differences between being a, a good manager and a good leader, um, I think there's many, many examples of that. Uh, and I think we can all you know, probably come up with some, and I think we could all probably give several examples of um, people that we've known over our careers that were good managers. But I would say that there's probably, um, almost all of us could think of people that we would say were good leaders. The leaders are the ones who stand out. The leaders are the ones who people aspire to be like. Um, you know, political figures, um, 
uh, sports athletes who have taken their teams and led them to wherever they were trying to go. We think of those and we know that, we understand that. But do we think about the little things? Like I said, I wrote a couple of things down and I wanted to make sure that I pointed these out. Um, the first one I wrote down was that the manager is the copy, the leader is the original. When you think about it, the, uh, the leader at some point in his career was probably, or her career, was probably um, a manager. They managed the process. They worked their way up to that leadership position. Managers focus on processes and leaders focus on people. We have to have both of those. You have to have someone to manage these processes. You have to have someone who's going to ensure that those things, that the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Those things have to happen, but you also have to have leaders that are going to inspire people. That are going to, they're going to put us on a direction. They're going to tell us where we're going. They're going to make us want to follow them. Managers rely on control, but leaders inspire trust. To me, this is where it starts getting interesting. You have managers who they say, and this is going back to some of the things that I deal with, they'll tell their employees what they, what they expect out of them, and this is how it's going to be, period. Those people that are in those types of position who, are, who have made that transition to leaders, though, their employees understand this. Their, their, their supervisors aren't constantly having to remind them, hey, you need to be to work by 7 o'clock. Hey, don't be leaving before 1630. Those employees understand that. They have a sense of loyalty. They have a sense of trust with their supervisors, and they, they're committed to that. They're committed to the supervisor. The last one I wrote down, this one is pretty interesting to me. Managers do things right. Leaders do the right thing. I think you really need to think about that for a minute, okay? Managers do things right. Leaders do the right thing. Okay, what does that mean to each of you? What does that mean to all of us? Does it mean that your supervisor has your back? Does it mean that your supervisor is going to be there for you? Does it mean that when you as an employer are going through a difficult time, that you're comfortable going to your supervisor and talking to them about it? I think what this does is this delineates the difference between a good manager and a good leader. The leaders have that trust with their employees. The leaders don't wonder what's going on in their employees' lives. So when the employee just all of a sudden doesn't show up or something's going on and they can't understand this employee's behavior, they have an idea of what's going on. The employee is talking to them. They're sharing, they're sharing their, uh, the things that they're going through. They have a line of communication that's open with their supervisor. For me, that's really what we should all be striving for. You know, you're going to work as you move through your careers. You're going to work through these uh, periods of time where you're managing something. Every single one of us at some point is going to manage something. Um, over my 30 some years working for the government now, um, it's, you know, when I was younger and I thought that I had a lot of responsibility and I thought I had something to deal with, looking back on that now I realize just how little I knew. Um, we're all going to go through these things and we're all going to grow. I think the big thing is, is that you have to make a decision at some point. How do you want to grow? Are you going to be a good leader or are you going to be a good manager? The fact of the matter is we need both everywhere. We need good managers and we need good leaders. It's just determining which path you want to take as you go through your career. That's all. Wow, thank you, Sean. We really needed to hear that. So thank you so much again. We appreciate it.